it's a wild and windy night out there. Sounds like the Banshee is about, but it's a good night for drinking whiskey. So let's jump in and have a look. Okay, so tonight we're going to do a viewer's choice. Now this one was recommended to me by Garstang Woodwork. So he was commenting on my videos and said uh, he's a big fan of Red Breast, loves Bushmills, took the tour there on Bushmills in, in uh, 2009. Also loved blends, so he's talking about uh, the powers on my powers video. And he said he picked up a bottle of Slane in Waitrose in England. He thought it was a stunning drink and you should definitely check it out. I think one or two um, more people actually recommended to try Slane as well. So I was in the supermarket the other day. I came across a bottle of this. It's 30 euros. So it's in the budget kind of category they are about. So in around the same price as Jameson. So I said, why not? Let's try a bottle of this and see what it's like. So Garstang Woodwork recommends Slane. So let's jump in and have a look at it. Okay, so before we jump in and taste and nose this whiskey, I'd like to give a little bit of history and a little bit about the whiskey, as always, and tell you a few stories. And this place is, uh, well, this is really rooted in history, so we're not going to get into all the history because we could be here for weeks. But this is, like I said, a bottle of slain whiskey. Now, up until a while ago, this was completely um, just aged and finished on the grounds of Slane Castle in County Mead, right at the Boyne River. Slane Castle is absolutely famous um, for its consorts. It has a deep history. It's owned by the Cunningham family. It was built, I think, in the early or late 1800s. It was on land that was purchased by Brigadier General Henry Cunningham. I think they bought it, he bought it in the 1700s. And like I say, it's right on the Boyne Valley. It's where the, the, the Battle of the Boyne took place. It's just up the river from Newgrange. So Newgrange is a megalithic site. It's a megalithic tomb that predates the pyramids. So the whole area is just steeped in deep, deep history. But the whiskey itself, like I said, they were just aging the whiskey and finishing the whiskey at Slane. They weren't actually distilling anything there. They were getting the distillate from Cooley. And I still think it, it is the original Cooley distillery distillate that's in this bottle or the whiskey that's in this bottle. Then it was bought out by Brown Foreman. Now, Brown Foreman are one of the biggest uh, spirit producers in the world. They're an American company and famous, our most famous band, I suppose, that everybody would know worldwide is Jack Daniels. So that's who owns Slane now. So they've changed the bottle to this new type bottle. This is out with a couple of years. And uh, like I say, that's who owns it now, Brown Foreman. So Brown Foreman has very, very deep pockets. So they've built an actual distillery on the site now of Slane Castle and are starting to produce their own distillate. I think the distillery got up and running in 2017. So they should be just about ready, I'd say, to put out their first whiskey. So it's over, it would be over the three year mark now this year. So it'll be interesting to see um, what whiskey they actually produce. I still think this is the original Cooley distillery whiskey that's in this bottle. So yeah, Slane Castle. I mean, what can you say about Slane Castle? And it's the Slane Village. Um, it's the home of the concerts. It's one of the most famous concert sites in the world. All the biggest acts play there. Metallica were there last year. Uh, Guns N' Roses the year before. You had U2, Bowie, Queen. The biggest acts in the world play at Slane Castle. It's a natural amphitheatre. The stage is set up right beside the river, between the river and the castle, and the grounds is a natural amphitheatre, and you get 80,000 people into the grounds of Slane Castle. The whole village gets shut down for the, the weekend of the concert. It's an amazing setup they have there, and they put on, like I say, the biggest concerts and some of the biggest acts in the world all come to play there. It's an amazing place. If you ever get a chance to go see a concert at Slane Castle, I highly recommend you do so. I know you can check out the distillery when you're there too if you're a whiskey fan. So, that's a little bit about the whiskey. Now let's get into nosing and tasting it. So, screw cap. I've no cork pop for you today. Okay, so tasting and nosing this now. I should just say it is a blended whiskey. So it's a blend of Irish malt and Irish grain whiskey. It's triple casked, which is written on the front of it there. So they've aged it in uh, virgin oak casks, uh, ex bourbon barrels. So it's Tennessee uh, whiskey, as they say, which is probably Jack Daniels, I, I would imagine, because it is owned by Brown Foreman, and Brown Foreman owned Jack Daniels. And Brown Foreman are one of the only um, spirit producers in the world that own their own Coopridge as well, so they're probably getting all the barrels from them, and as well as the Oloroso casks, so the Spanish sherry Oloroso casks, and that's what you can smell. As soon as you take the lid off that bottle, you just get the sherry straight away, so you can really get the smell of the Oloroso barrels. Now, I love... Um, 
whiskey that's finished in Oloroso cast. Redbreast 12 is one of my favorite whiskeys and you get that deep fruitiness, which is what you get from this as well. So on the nose straight away, you get a vanilla, toffee, butterscotch kind of. Then you can get the sherry with the fruits, the deep fruits, the black currants. It's ever stick your nose in a black bag of dried fruit with sultanas, the stuff that they used for making the Christmas cakes and the fruit cakes. Stick your nose in one of those and you'll get that Oloroso uh, influence. Now, it's very muted. That's one thing I have to say about this whiskey. Bear in mind that it is a 30 euro bottle of whiskey. Uh, it's a blended whiskey and I'm not sure. It's a non-age statement, so I don't know how old it is, but and I couldn't find out. They don't give you too much information. But it's all in there. It's lovely, sweet, vanilla, toffee, butterscotch, and the hint of that sherry. It's everything I love in a whiskey, but very muted. I wish you could just dial it up a small bit. It's like a muted red breast. Red breast is my favorite whiskey, so this is quite nice. So on the palate. So on the palate, again, it's everything you get on the nose. It has a lovely, lovely sweetness to it. A little bit of hint of the oak. You get deep red or those deep black fruits, the toffee and the vanilla, and then it kind of lingers with a sweetness. It has a little bit of staying power to it. Not too strong a finish, I'd say. Again, it's only 40% ABV. I would love to taste a cask strength version of this because what's in this glass is lovely, but it's just turned down a little bit. I'd love to just turn the volume up on this because it's everything that I love in a whiskey. But at 30 euros, like I say, it's half the price of red breast and the price of whiskey has gotten ridiculous and it's getting kind of up to the price now where like mid-level whiskies or kind of good quality whiskies are starting to get very expensive. They're creeping towards the 100 euro uh, mark, which is kind of getting out of the reach of, you know, most people can't afford to go out and spend 100 euros on a bottle of whiskey every now and again. Like, so a bottle like this for 30 quid, I think, yeah, I'm going to keep one of these on my shelf. So again on the palate, I'm after forgetting what I was talking about there now, so we'll go again on the palate. So yeah, you can definitely get the bourbon barrel influence, you get the vanilla, you get the toffee and the kind of butterscotch. Again, it's not, it's not gonna blow your socks off, but it is lovely. There's nothing, there's no huge flavors, and it doesn't transform, so it's not, you know, it's not gonna catch you out by surprise or anything. It's kind of a muted flavor, but very, very, very nice. This, I wouldn't add water to this or put ice in it. This is a sip and whiskey neat, definitely. Um, it's very, very drinkable, very, very Moorish. Like Jameson Black Barrel, that kind of thing, where it's a very, very drinkable whiskey and a very, very affordable whiskey too. So, yeah, it's vanilla, you get some of the oak, you get some of the fruit, and then it just kind of fades away into a sweetness and it doesn't linger too much. There's no real sting of the alcohol, so there's no peppery notes or anything like that. It's very, very drinkable, very kind of mild and sweet, and all the lovely notes are there. But uh, yeah, I'd love to get a cask strength version of this. Um, so let's leave it on its side now. We'll let it, let it open up, see if it changes, see if it does anything. We'll leave it 10 minutes in the glass. Hopefully we don't get blown away or washed away. I might have to spend the night in my shed drinking whiskey. It's not too bad. Okay, so we've let it sit for 10 minutes and the shed hasn't blown down in this storm. Although it might yet, but it'll make for a good whiskey video if it does. We'll be drinking our whiskey in the rain. So, on the nose. Again, it's kind of muted a small bit now, even more again, so. You really have to struggle to pull the flavors out of you. Definitely get the sherry or the Oloroso influence. That's, that's the biggest, um, that's really to the forefront. But it hasn't changed. It's not like, I suppose, a higher price whiskey where you leave for 10 minutes and it opens up and then you get a whole bunch of new flavors. It is what it is. Again, it has everything that I love in a whiskey. It has the toffee and the vanilla and the deep fruits from the Oloroso cast, but it's all just kind of turned down, like I've said already. It's like listening to your favorite music through a wall. You're just like, oh man, turn it up, turn it up. So you kind of <laughs> just dial up the, up the volume on, on the flavor a bit. And this would be absolutely fantastic. So on the palate again. Not much different, maybe a little bit more of the oak influence I can get there now. A little bit more of the oak, definitely a little bit more of the oak. It's kind of coming through there now, all right. But it's still, it's the toffee, vanilla, and the Oloroso sherry. They're the, they're the three main things that I want to get from this. 
So what would I say about it? It's a, it's a nice, mild, sipping whiskey. Don't add water to this, I wouldn't say. I wouldn't put it on ice. It's very, very pleasant. There's nothing offensive about this. There's nothing horrible or bad. All the great flavors are in there. They're just a little bit on the muted side. Like I say, I'd love to see a cask strength version of this. This is their budget line. So bear that in mind, it's 30 euros a bottle. I think this is gonna become a staple on my shelf, definitely. It's the kind of whiskey that you can go out by, spend 30 euros on it, and you can come home, you can sip away on it, and you don't have to feel guilty that you spent a fortune on it, and you're getting a really nice sipping whiskey. All the flavors are there, they're all lovely, if they are just a little bit muted. And uh, yeah, so I would definitely recommend this at the price point. I would take this over a bottle of Jameson. Bear in mind, it's the same prices. You know, Jameson, Powers, Paddy's, those kind of Irish whiskies. If you like your budget Irish whiskies, definitely have a go at this. Um, I think you will really like it. Again, it's a muted red breast is how it, the best you could describe it. So I'm excited to see what else comes out of Slain because if this is their budget line for a budget whiskey, it's very, very good. Um, so a cask strength version of this, I'd love to taste that. So okay, let's propose a little toast and finish up and uh, give you my summary on this whiskey. So. I would recommend this whiskey for anybody getting into whiskey. It's a nice, mild, sipping whiskey, like I've said already. Uh, there's nothing bad about this whiskey whatsoever. It's not going to blow your socks off. It is a kind of a mild, kind of a muted whiskey, but it's a budget whiskey, 30 euros. It's very, very nice. So definitely try it out. Definitely recommend it for 30 euros a bottle. If you're buying yourself a budget Irish, definitely check out Slain. I don't think you'll be disappointed. You won't be blown away, but you won't be disappointed. So. Propose a toast as always, and we have a little wood influence in this one. So, as you slide down the banisters of life, may the grain never point the wrong direction. I'll see you in the next one, guys. Slide you. Yeah, very mild. You could sip away on this all day. Toffee, vanilla, and sherry. For 30 euros, that's not too bad.